What is up you guys? It is your boy John here from Puma Plow. Welcome back to another on the farm episode 102. I do appreciate you guys clicking on the video. I did a bad thing. I got the lawnmower stuck in the mud. Boys, it had just rained and if you recall this is the garden that we had plowed. And uh, yeah, got a little soft and had to go in the shed and say, hey uh, dad, I need a tractor, I need a chain, I need you to drive. So. Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing, but you know, it happens. That's probably, and this might sound weird to some of y'all, This that's probably the first time I've ever gotten stuck in the mud down there. I don't think I've gotten anything stuck before that I can recall. We got stuck in a snow drift one time with Dad's old truck. Uh, Two-wheel drive Chevy versus like a, a, a snow drift. Pretty, pretty good sized snow drift. We got stuck. We had to take another vehicle in. Luckily, there were two vehicles going in the lane that day. So that, that helped, and uh, otherwise we would have had to walk, which no big deal, no big deal. But, you know, go get the Power King 1614, pull out our x -Mark laser, wrap a chain around the hitch here, and uh, be good to go. No big deal, right? So this on the farm is kind of the, let's clean up the footage that we have. So obviously this took place right after it rained, and we'll get to some other footage here in a minute that's a little bit newer but you know it's all new to you guys it's the first time you guys are seeing it so I don't know why I even mentioned it let's be real let's be real but I know some of you guys have been waiting for this footage uh, you've heard about it via TeamSpeak or live stream over on Twitch one or the other I have talked about getting the lawnmower stuck so zero turns and mud just don't really mix guys they really don't they just once the tires get full of dirt you're done you might as well just stop. The deck was actually touching the ground. I did lift the deck up, but it was still dragging on the ground, so that didn't help. Um, but you can see, and trying to get that front caster to turn around or plow on, it just didn't. It just didn't want to plow on. That's all there is to it. So it's kind of unfortunate, but you know, stuff happens. And now I've learned that uh, I need to use my little John Deere around the old chicken house building. Our garden's getting a little closer to the chicken house here. We need to actually kind of push the garden back a couple feet right there and give us a little more grass just so it's easy to mow with the Xmark laser. That's a 2560 EFI in case you guys are wondering. Electronic fuel ignition. It's an older older machine. It has uh, maybe around 900 to 1,000 hours on it by now, I believe. We got it when it had 800 something hours. So it's probably over 1,000 by now, but I'm not totally sure. It runs like a champ still. And uh, we do take care of it quite quite well. And, uh, yeah, it's good to go. But you can see I left a little uh, little bit of a mud mark in the garden. No big deal. I mean, you can see there for a second there's actually water standing in the garden. So that's a bit of an issue, guys. But it's okay. I, I buried the tire up to the rim. It didn't even get, like, on the rim itself. So, I mean, I really wasn't that buried. Um, I didn't. You know, once I went in, I tried for a second to get out, and then I was like, nah, this isn't going to happen, so I'll just go get Dad, so. Yeah. So, ever since we've worked the garden the first time, our harrow has been sitting back here, and we needed to move it so we could cut the grass, so. Had Dad come back on the Little Power King yet again, he was, I think he was still on there from before. So, you know, might as well stay on the tractor, and I was off cutting grass, and he just came back, and, okay, let's move that, and cut the grass there, and, uh. Away we go. This old hair section it doesn't really hurt it to so leave it outside. It's it's ancient. A little bit of water is not going to hurt it, you know. So there's that. All right, so now we're onto the big tractor. And uh, the fast forward a couple days now. Fast forward like a week or so. Something like that. I'm not totally sure. And, yeah, it's time to work the garden up again. The garden has dried since all that rain. As you can tell by our plastic blow in there into our shop, it's a little windy outside. We actually will be rolling that plastic up very soon. We roll that plastic up during the summer, so our shop and our shed, it's all wide open, and we don't have to worry about anything. But for now, it's still down. It's been a little chilly here and there yonder, but we will be rolling that plastic up very soon. Maybe this week. Maybe the day this video is coming out. I don't know. I'm not totally sure. So we will do that when we can. All right, so we have the disc, our old Ford Flex disc that we have modified the hitch on and some other stuff. It now has notch disc blades on the front. Um, 
it's orange now it's all nice and painted up and uh, good to go so we're heading to the garden here obviously and you can see the garden is dry but it's not a hundred percent dry it's dry on top and we are getting some weed pressure so the theory this year is that we weren't going to plant our cover crop of either oats or rye for our pumpkins and instead we were going to just work the garden work the garden work the garden and that's kind of the theory here although we've been talking dad was talking the other day about maybe instead of working the garden so much maybe we round up once or twice um, I'm more of a fan of work in the garden, but, you know, ultimately it's dad's decision, dad's garden. So what dad says, I'll, I'll do. <laughs> I don't really care either way. So, yeah, I just like playing on, on the big tractor with the disc, honestly. It's fun. It's fun. So we're getting the three-point hitch adjusted here mostly, the top link. We want our disc to sit fairly level front to back on the ground. We don't want the front gangs to dig in too much more than the back ones, let's say. And if you notice, I have, actually I said it here, but I don't think I show it. The disc gangs are pretty well set straight on when we actually get going here. I believe I didn't show that part, but uh, there you can kind of see they're set real straight. And I'm not really trying to plow the garden, I'm especially now. I'm trying to open it up just a little bit to allow it to dry because it was windy this day and quite warm. And if you can open the garden up, break the crust, it will dry quite well. Um, so that's exactly what we were going to do here. And if we uh, killed a few weeds along the way, that's cool too. You can see we are getting some weed brusher, like I said. It's not terrible yet, but it will be soon. Uh, since this is filmed, we've had more rain, a lot more rain. Actually, not that much, but we've had more rain and uh, we've had some temperature days, nice warm days. So it's gonna start greening up very soon very soon if it's not already uh, and you can tell I'm not using GPS obviously or anything I'm just kind of going wherever I don't have GPS on this tractor of course I, it'd be cool if I did though that'd be really cool but for our little garden that's about an acre a little over an acre I think it is total I I don't need GPS obviously it'd be neat though it'd be cool it'd be cool I'll be down with it but uh, yeah so we're just working up the garden here cracking it open like I said not going crazy deep uh, disc is not set aggressive just kind of scratching across the surface that's really what my goal was here because um, the garden is fairly level-ish and if you over disc it too much and your disc isn't set quite right you can ridge it up real bad and we don't really want to do that so the theory is just work the top layer just a little bit a little bit a little bit kill weeds that's all we want to do by uh, disking the garden a bunch is just continue to kill weeds. We really need to get out and do something with our hollyhocks patch there. You saw it's full of weeds. Full of weeds, but uh, you know, it's all right. So, park the tractor, let the garden dry. Now I'm on the John Deere 111, and Dad was on the, the Xmark laser. And I was like, you know what? I need to get the John Deere out anyway to cut around the old chicken house here, since we don't want to get the lawn more stuck in the garden again. So I was like, I'm going to cut some grass with John Deere just to kind of help him out and speed the process up. Honestly, I think I was just in the way. <laughs> like, the little bit of mowing that I did, Dad could have done in like three seconds with the Xmark laser. So it was kind of just like, you know, why was I even out there? I was having fun. I enjoy driving the little tractor. I mean, it is a little tractor, but it's still fun. You know, anytime I get to mess with any of the tractors, the four-wheeler, whatever down there, it's all toys to me. So you can see Dad's on the Xmark Laser 2560, and I'm putting along on the little John Deere 111. <laughs> Going putt, 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 putt. <laughs> In comparison to the 2560, of course, that's 25 horsepower and 60 inch cut, in case you guys don't know. Um, like I said earlier, that particular more is electronic fuel injected. So it works quite well. It's fairly efficient on the gas consumption. Uh, it does have two two fuel tanks, and uh, it works quite well. It works quite well. So, yeah, I was like, I'm going to cut some grass. And the other problem with this John Deere is with that shoot on, and this grass was pretty tall that day, too. It leaves clippings everywhere. It's not the best discharger, especially with that shoot on. And once you start getting in some heavy grass, you lose a few engine RPMs, you lose your deck, your 
blade tip speed starts to go down on your blades and it's just the whole thing so it was pretty windy and I was getting covered in clippings too so I was like I don't really want to do much of that so fast forward I believe after lunch now we came in town for lunch went back out uh, back at the disc and gonna hook up the harrows you can see a the grass needs to be cut where they're sitting again because it's like I said it's fast forward a week from the earlier clip and B go ahead and put the hair all back on the uh, the Ford Flex disc behind the case 995 so gonna hook up the arrows again they're already set pretty well where I want them kind of flat down keep the garden nice and level and you can see the disc gangs are still set nice and straight I was gonna set them a little more aggressive but then I was like you know I like what it's doing I really only want to work the top layer so I'm, I was happy with the result of the first pass. So let's, you know, get back to it and uh, do some more. We do need to probably break out the sprayer and do around our leaf uh, piles there, our leaf mulching piles uh, with that would be pretty good. But for the most part, this is, uh, is working. You can see I'm making a little bit of dust, which means it dried throughout the afternoon. And like I said, this is after lunch, so it's uh yeah it, it, it dried up quite well it worked down fairly well and uh the weeds in our hollyhocks is oh goodness <laughs> but anyway that's another story right that's another story entirely so but yeah here you can see i've i've gone over it a couple times now uh various passes go in all different directions trying to keep the garden nice and leveled out and smooth uh, for water reasons and and why not reasons basically so I'm just going over it all kinds of different ways and it's really cool where you can tell where I just worked it's darker and obviously and then it it was drying it was definitely drying and by the end of the day it's like I said it was pretty windy the garden was actually blowing like the the top layer so now we are using a put it's an old push plow that we have put some gauge wheels on and I know that might sound really weird, and I think we used this last year in and on the farm. We've done a little work to it and made it a little bit different, but we are basically planting sweet corn. It is time. It's an early planting of sweet corn, but it's time nonetheless. And uh, we always plant in three rows for uh, maximum pollination and, and all that stuff. So, I don't know. We just kind of guess, especially this year. In past years, we'll guess or we'll take like a hole out there and do this row so far and so far. This year, I just guessed. So, normally we would use the hoe, like I said, to open up the row, the furrow. But I was like, you know what? Let's just get it done. And we made the little thing. So why not use it? And uh, Dad's actually using our. We joke that it's the it's the patented. It's not. It's it's a trimmer shaft off of an old trimmer, so basically an aluminum tube. And on top he has a little wooden handle with a tuna cup, tuna can, screwed down to the little wooden handle, and then he has a funnel. And basically down there it's always windy, so you can't just drop your seeds. So by putting them through the little pipe, it, you place the seed exactly where you want it. So you drop one seed at a time, and away you go. He calls it a back and seed saver, is what he calls it, and it works quite well. So I made all the furrows, dad is putting the corn in the ground, and then I come back with the garden rake and close the furrow up and tamp it down just a little bit. And within, I don't know, 15 minutes, 10 minutes maybe, it wasn't very long. We were done planting corn. We are the first planting here. There you can see dad's little back and seed saver. It's quite handy. It is quite handy. So there you go, guys. Three rows of corn planted. Little farm update, general farm update for you guys. I really do appreciate you watching another on the farm. Make sure you hit that like button for more. Subscribe if you have not already done so. And until next time, toodles.